Hey everyone, how are you all doing? Hope you've had a good day, morning or evening. Because today, we truly have some fine salt. From fanboys deleting their Twitter accounts, I'm looking at you, saltiest gaming. He deleted his Twitter account to avoid criticism because even until the very last hour, he was shit-talking Xbox to the point that he was certain that this would not go through on Xbox's end. He was so confident Xbox would fail, but when Xbox didn't fail, he deleted his Twitter to avoid the criticism from everyone making fun of him for all this time, shit-talking, and then proceed to fall flat on his ass. But don't you worry, he's back. Now, what should you do with that? Go to his Twitter and let him know he's an absolute dumbass for defending a plastic box. And I don't mean go out of your way to be an absolute asshole to him, I just mean to take the piss. And don't you worry, it's just not him. J-Dub, J-Tech, King Thrash, and many other fanboys are refusing to talk about the situation and are trying to avoid it because they lost it. Isn't that funny? I find it funny. Now, they're trying to either avoid the situation or give Xbox shit in other ways, which is absolutely funny to see. And remember, they are all doing this in the name of their plastic box. They are not being paid by Sony to do this. They are doing it for the so-called brand loyalty, when yet none of them actually bother to play these games. They would rather spend all their time on Twitter talking about Xbox. It's not that hard to sit down and play your games after you come home from work. But then you wondered to yourself, do they just live off of Centrelink? Because most of them are in their 20s to 30s. But before we get started with any of the video stuff, Let's have a quick talk about the FTC stuff so you're all up to date. The PlayStation fanboys were relying on the FTC to stop the acquisition, but as I'm sure you all know by now, they have failed. And so has their appeal to stop this acquisition for other reasons. Isn't that funny? And now they're being scrutinized and it's pretty funny to watch. But the best part about the CMA and FTC's complaining is that they made Xbox commit to bring Call of Duty to platforms that have never had a COD on that system. But with all the technical stuff behind us, let's get in to the videos. He looks so happy to see what Xbox can do with Activision Blizzard. And if you zoom in really close, it looks like he's having a fucking devious time. So let me just start by saying this. This deal is absolutely disgusting. Oh no, I get to spend $15 a month just to play Call of Duty or any game of my choosing on that subscription service. What a fucking shame. Oh, what's that? Nintendo also gets to fucking play Call of Duty? Oh my god, it's fucking terrible. This is the end of gaming as we know it. What Microsoft is doing is I don't care. <laughs> hey guys, I don't care about the situation, but I still made a video on it to share my opinions. Seems pretty valid, don't you think? Bro, I genuinely do not care about this deal, okay? As a gamer, which I am, uh, my, my loyalty is to the games. That's it. I don't believe that for a second. You know full well you would die for PlayStation. I'm sure if you go look at my previous videos, you will find a lot of proof where you do it. So don't lie to us, Lucas. We will find proof. I can go grab proof right now if you really want. Or I could just link a previous video and I can guarantee nine times out of 10, you will more than likely say it in that video where Sony is far superior. If you want proof of that right now, I went out of my way to find some. Go to 16 minutes, 58 seconds in my previous Amazing Lucas video. I jumped around just to find something and that was the first thing I found. There you go. It was that easy. Now, there's always these, these uh, PC peasants because that's what they are. Oh yeah, if I'm a peasant, why did I drop $3,500 on a top-of-the-line gaming PC? Was it worth? I mean, I probably could have got it a little bit cheaper, but oh well, I got what I wanted at the end. Anytime I hear someone say that they want to remove exclusivity, it's like, bro, that's the whole point of having a console, is that you have, right, games that are exclusive to this console. Personally, I can agree with both sides of this shit. If you want to sell a system, you need to have something unique about it, different from the competitor. For example, Xbox may have a far better subscription service compared to PlayStation. Or, on the other hand, PlayStation may offer an even better subscription service or better games, whatever. Both arguments are valid. I do believe exclusives are very outdated when it comes to 
trying to sell systems. I believe systems themselves should offer unique benefits. For example, either in their subscription services or what features they can have access to. Who knows, maybe you can even mod first party games or even other companies that join onto that system can allow their games to be modified. It would be pretty cool, add longevity to all the games and give an incentive for people to join your platform. Xbox may have the game, but can it have mods and be modified? I know to some people they may see that as a very out there example, but either way, that would easily make, in my eyes, PlayStation or Xbox, whichever one does it, the better console. And games are exclusive to that console. Now, at the moment in time, there is no exclusivity. What is the point? It's called choice, Lucas. If I had a choice to play Halo on console or on PC, I would rather play it on PC, where I have my mouse and keyboard and a fucking high frame rate. You know, these, uh, what, I don't know what this generation is. It's a bunch of limp wristed, you know, me, 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 you know, uh, generation, uh, they, them pronouns generation that constantly talk about, well, we should all just be friends and we should all just be able to play on any console we want. Is this, is this really what I get for voting for the Labour Party, bro? I just, I just want to be an anti-tank platform. You know what, fuck it, I'll give you my pronouns. I'm either a Waffenträger Alf E100 anti-tank platform, or a Flak 88 German artillery piece. Fuck you, and that's how it's gonna be from now on. Now, let's move away from Amazing Lucas and go take a look at our next fanboy, Dreamcast guy. People are starting to wonder, okay, how is Sony going to get revenge? What is it that PlayStation could buy that would even compare to the completely insane scope of Call of Duty and King and freaking World of Warcraft? Let's talk about the idea of who they're going to grab. I like how this video only came out roughly a day later after the news that Xbox pretty much won against the FTC. I don't think PlayStation is going to come out straight and be like, hey guys, we're buying Square Enix from software, EA, or whoever we can find that is looking to be bought. I find it kind of impressive that you choose to report on stuff that is only just speculation. Of course, Sony's going to fight back some way, somehow, but assuming that they're gonna straight up buy a company that is not even big enough to compete with Activision Blizzard, they need to be able to make as much money as Activision Blizzard or compete on the same level as Activision Blizzard. The best you could probably get is From Software, but even then, I don't think that would work as From Software has been trying to go independent or self-publishing, whichever one you wanna use, for some time now. We're going to be taking a look at a lot of different tweets today and taking a look at a big article by Paul Tassi. But I want to start things off with this tweet he dropped yesterday. I bet Sony pulls the trigger on Square Enix or FromSoft. Now, to me, I do think these are probably the safest bets. From software, like I said, definitely not. They want to be self-publishing. And from even just a quick Google search right now, they still maintain that idea that they want to do that. They can still do exclusives for PlayStation, like a Bloodborne 2 or even a new Souls game for PlayStation, but I doubt they will be able to get a full ownership of From Software. Who knows, maybe that could change. Maybe one day they were like, fuck it, you offered us a good deal, we'll take it. All you had to do, Dreamcast guy, was a bit of fucking research. That is all you needed, and you failed to do that. No wonder no one takes you seriously. I also find it funny that your top comments, or majority of them, are taking the piss out of you. Partnership for this last couple years. Here is why it's difficult to compare them though. This is the size of what Microsoft just bought. Like, actually consider that. Here is the entire rest of uh, Xbox Game Studios. You can see here we have 343 Industries, Obsidian, Rare, we've got Ninja Theory up here. In and now, this is my last complaint with the Dreamcast video. I wish he would give some more context to what this graph is meant to represent. Is it meant to represent yearly revenue from the companies? Or is it meant to represent employee count? I can't tell what it is and I can't be fucked installing Reddit to find out. Because two things he mentions in that clip, which I don't think I shared it, was employee count, and then overall size of the company, which I don't think that graph would be right for the overall sizes of the companies. But I'm sure some of you will correct me in the comments if I'm right or wrong. So that is it for this video. You boys all take care if you can, help me reach a thousand subs. Have a great day, boys.